Hello everyone. Kele Kumalo's sister Zandi Le Kumalo and the state witness continued testifying in Senzo Meiwa trial on Friday. She told the court that once Senzo Meiwa was shot, the alleged intruders fled. She reached out for her cell phone hidden on the couch, but she had a mental block and forgot the police emergency number 10111. Zandile's testimony started with her being shown photos and questioned about where in the house she was positioned when the alleged robbery took place. She was unpacking her step-by-step -step account of what had happened that night in 2014. She said I was hiding between the basin and the bathtub. This is the window where I thought if a criminal were to walk past they would see me. That's why I decided to crouch so they don't see me. I slightly opened the door and peeped to see what was happening. I saw Senzo coming from the kitchen. He was wearing blue jeans and white t-shirt and white sneakers. He knelt just next to the couch and the TV stand. While I was in the bathroom, Kelly, my mother and the suspect of the dreadlocks came and Kelly stood behind Senzo. She alleged that her mother reached for her cell phone that was on charger close to the couch and said the intruder saw she had a phone and hit her with his elbow on her upper body. She then fell. She said that at the time, Kelly had supported Senzo in her lap where he was kneeling. She then came out of the bathroom. She went towards Meiwa, her mother and sister, and asked what happened. Kelly told her that Meiwa was shot. She said, I started panicking. I saw blood on the floor and his t-shirt. He seemed to struggle to breathe. I remember I had hidden my phone behind the cushion when the intruder came in and demanded cell phones and money. I panicked. I couldn't die because I forgot the number 10 triple one. My mind froze. I went out to seek help. She said she went to a neighbor's house to her mother's friend. She then asked the neighbor to call the police and an ambulance as intruders had shot Meiwa. Zandi also indicated that a few moments after they arrived at, at the Bazelong hospital, Meiwa was pronounced dead and his wife arrived with a couple of people who immediately started assaulting Kelly, accusing her of killing the captain of Bafana Bafana. She alleged that while they were assaulting her sister, they were pulling her with controls and two of them fell down while attempting to separate them and stop the fight. She also told the court that she spoke a few words with Mandisa, telling her that this is not the time for behaving that way. She even reminded her that Senzo was a man who never liked hostility. Zandi also recalled the moments leading up to Meiwa's death, stating that his temperature was dropping as they approached Bazelong Hospital in Fosloras. Upon their arrival, Zandi asked help from hospital staff who eventually arrived with a stretcher to transport Meiwa inside. Sandy vividly recalled the distressing scene when Meiwa was taken into a room where her mother and Longo Chala joined them. The sound of her mother's anguished cries echoed through the room, signaling that something was seriously amiss. Kelly, overcome with grief, entered the room and engaged in a conversation with Meiwa's lifeless body. Zandi couldn't recall the exact words spoken, but she remembered Kelly tenderly kissing his forehead and removing his earrings and watch. However, Mtoko Sisitwala contradicted this claim of assault. He said that Mandisa stood beside him and was not involved in the altercation with Kelly Kumalo. What's your take on this one, people? Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more news.